decipher biosciences. Um, so uh, today up we have uh, draft LCD DL38292 for the decipher prostate cancer classifier. Um, just a little bit about the company. Um, we've been around for a dozen years or so, a little more, um, based in uh, San Diego and also Vancouver, Canada. Um, what's different about us, we're, we're very focused on prostate and bladder cancers. Um, and um, we have uh, unique technology that we, that we bring to these uh, challenging disease areas. Um, so firstly, a whole transcriptome approach. Um, we collect more data than, than we need because we don't know what, uh, what data we'll need in the future. Um, so we're measuring the RNA, the activity of the genes in, in the tumor sample. Um, and then also we've uh, uh, developed the world's largest uh, uh, database for prostate and, and probably also for bladder cancers. So we leverage this uh, through academic collaborations um, to continuously study the disease. Um, so prostate cancer uh, is, uh, is really a growing problem. Um, that's just our population dynamics. Uh, the, gray, the gray tsunami basically is, uh, is responsible for this. Uh, men aren't dying of uh, cardiovascular disease and now they're actually um, at risk of dying of prostate cancer. They're living long enough basically. Um, and specifically for Medicare uh, and, and the US public, why this is important is that um, uh, about in this is specific to prostate cancer, but it's actually extendable to lots of other solid tumors. Um, about 90% of the costs of treating uh, cancer are when the disease is in the metastatic state. And about 90% of the metastatic patients in this country are, um, are Medicare beneficiaries. So basically 80% of the costs of treating this disease falls on, on all of us. Um, and also what we know um, very generally in, in cancer medicine is that detecting it early and, and treating, treating it when it's in its localized form um, can actually reduce the metastatic burden. And, and so really our goal is to work um, in, in this space to, to give this actionable inf information as soon as possible um, to prevent uh, metastatic onset. <clears throat> so in prostate cancer, um, this is quite different than a disease like lung cancer where, um, where you'll have mutations that, for example, in the KRAS gene that dictate what treatment ultimately a patient um, um, will, will undergo. In prostate cancer, it's, it's really all the foundation of deciding what treatment one person gets versus another is all based on, on the risk, prognosis of the patient. So we need to understand what the metastatic potential of the tumor is uh, in order to, to gauge the risk. And, um, and how it's been done um, uh, up until, really up until uh, recent times is using different biomarkers, uh, PSA, the Gleason score, the stage. These are all really reflections of the biology of the disease. And now using the genome and the transcriptome, we can, we can drill down much finer detail and more accurately um, uh, come up with a prognosis for the disease. So the key questions that were a prognosis and knowing prognosis is, uh, is extremely important and, and risk stratification is important um, are uh, at initial diagnosis to figure out whether somebody actually needs to have uh, their prostate removed or to undergo radical therapy in the first place. So now it's become very popular, especially among younger men that are diagnosed as something called active surveillance. Um, but there's m many other questions um, where, we, where we need to know risk in order to dial up or dial down the therapy. Um, and that's basically what is captured in this, in this uh, draft uh, proposed coverage decision. So how was Decipher developed? Um, we collaborated with the Mayo Clinic. Um, at the time, they had the world's largest uh, tumor registry, over 20,000 patients, 20 years outcomes data, and you need very long-term outcomes data um, to, um, 
to really know what happens to somebody with prostate cancer given its uh, long natural history. Um, so we had uh, um, a, l a large sampling of patients that developed metastasis, so initially diagnosed with, with local, uh, localized disease, but got, uh, received local therapy in the form of a radical prostatectomy, but subsequently developed a metastasis. Um, and then we also had um, lots of people with very long-term follow-up, as I mentioned, 20 years, that never developed metastasis. So we, we performed whole transcriptome analysis and using um, different machine learning techniques, um, identified seven key pathways and, and genes in these pathways um, that are summarized into a score. And, and this is what the urologist or radiation oncologist really uses. Um, the score goes from zero to one. Is the, the patient at low risk, low metastatic potential versus high metastatic potential? And um, what we've observed in uh, now thousands of patients in, in published uh, validation studies consistently decipher outperforms clinical risk factors. And the way that m most uh, clinicians are using it is, is not to throw out uh, the old information, the information that you get from PSA and Gleason score, but actually to, to combine the two and, and add them. Um, so Decipher, just to be clear, just only utilizes the genomic information, but, um, but typically we interpret this in the context of, um, of, of the clinical risk factors. Um, so here's an example from a recent validation study. Um, uh, th this is a, a, a cohort of men actually um, at um, the Durham VA, um, so not that far away from here, that were followed also for a very long time, about 20 years. And you could see for two different um, really important clinical endpoints, metastasis, what we're trying to prevent, and, and death from prostate cancer. Um, the patients with low risk um, by Decipher, the low risk group, really don't have any events going out um, pretty far in time um, versus the high-risk patients. And, and really the take-home from this is that there's still a lot of work to be done in prostate cancer. So in, in breast cancer, um, um, oncologists are willing to add, and, and the patients themselves, add uh, multiple lines of therapy, so surgery, radiotherapy, hormone therapy, and chemotherapy to reduce the risk of, of metastasis and death by a few percentage points. But in prostate cancer, we still have a long way to go. And you can see here, the, the men with the highest uh, decipher risk uh, scores um, are experiencing um, a lot of events. And that's where we, we actually need to uh, intensify therapy. And, and the good news is that there's a lot of new, um, new agents that, that can be used uh, and that uh, have been proven to reduce these uh, event rates. Um, so I think I'll just, in the interest of time, just skip ahead a little bit. So here's uh, the decipher what the test report looks like at initial diagnosis or after uh, initial local therapy, a prostatectomy. Um, and, uh, and again, our um, research efforts in collaboration with academic medicine continue um, to, to look at now thousands of patients um, really across the continuum of disease. Um, and um, also, probably more importantly for the future, is we're uh, participating in most of the major GU trials that are coming out now. So um, many, many of the uh, uh, NCI-funded clinical trials, um, they actually are required, you're required part of the enrollment criteria to get a Decipher score because we want to uh, adapt the therapy and, and do the randomizations according to, to the risk. Um, it, the test and, and genomics um, has uh, become uh, quite popular um, in the last few years, and so I think urologists, radiation oncologists are becoming more comfortable using these technologies, and patients are, um, are starting to ask uh, for these technologies. And um, yeah, in summary, um, I think this, th these approaches, personalized medicine approaches, are, are really the future. There's no turning back the clock. Um, and um, yeah, I think that's, um, we basically we wanted to say we support uh, 
the draft uh, policy and um, we'll be submitting uh, some uh, minor comments in the comment period.